Hi students. In this video we're going to introduce the basics of SOLIDWORKS simulation. SOLIDWORKS simulation is a finite element analysis program which uses your solid model to determine stresses, forces, strains, reactions, all that kind of good stuff. We do it by breaking up the model into small regions called elements. These elements are then treated as three-dimensional springs. So the process is we're going to apply motion constraints to the model. We're going to apply loads to the model. We're going to have the software break up the model into these little elements. And, and don't worry, it's not going to destroy your model. You can keep working on it afterward. Once we break up the model and those loads and displacements and all those other constraints are transferred, we're going to simultaneously solve the entire thing using matrix methods um, to get our solutions. And then from there we can determine displacements, uh, various stress components, all that good stuff. So let's begin. On the screen we have a bar that is one inch by one inch. And we're going to apply a thousand pound load to this and we're going to see how it deforms and we're going to calculate the stress. First thing you're probably going to have to do is go under tools, go down to add-ins, and make sure that SOLIDWORKS simulation is checked that will give you the simulation tab right here. Let's click on that. We're going to do a new study. It's going to be static. We'll say OK. We need to tell it what material we're going to use. I'm going to use probably the most common aluminum out there, 6061T6. I'll apply. Next, we're going to apply our fixtures. These are going to determine uh, the orientation of our model in space. I'm going to make sure it can't fly around in cyberspace. So I'm going to apply a very simple fixed geometry to the top so the model won't be able to move in the X, Y, or Z. And you can see a nice little animation of the fixed geometry constraint I've just chosen. Okay, so there's our, our fixturing for location. Next, we're going to apply an external load, in this case our force. So I'm going to apply a force to that face. And I think what I want to do, well, let's go with a thousand pounds. I'm going to flip it so that it's in tension. That looks good. And that's it. So we've applied our constraints. Now we're ready to mesh it and have SOLIDWORKS transfer those constraints and loads into our finite element model. I'm going to right click on mesh and I'm going to say create mesh. So you can have a really coarse mesh which solves quickly or a fine mesh which takes significantly longer, uh, but we'll stay right in the middle for now. We'll say OK. Okay, There's those little elements I was talking about. Each one of these is going to act as a three-dimensional spring. The last thing we need to do is run it. And because it's a simple model, it solves very quickly. And here's our answer. Now we can query and see what it got for solutions. You, SOLIDWORKS generally brings up von Mises stress as the uh, first solution. But we can look at all kinds of other answers. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to say Edit Definition. And I think what I'd rather look at is my stress in the Y direction. I'm going to hit the drop down. I'll say stress in the Y. 
I can choose my units. So if I want to look at US customary units, pounds per square inch, it's right there. If you want pascals, there's newtons per meter square, megapascals, whatever works for you. So I'll say OK. And we're looking about right. We we applied a thousand pounds over this one inch by one inch rod. And you know, right about here says we should be at a thousand psi, and it looks about right. But let's check it. So if I go over to stress and hit probe, I can actually click on the elements and ask for the solution at that point. So in the y-axis, the stress is 1,000.23 psi, which is exactly what we'd expect. And you can go around and click and check other points. And they should be all very, very similar. But the one thing that doesn't look right in all this is the top. You would think, because this face is unable to move in space, that this should be a 1,000 PSI right to the top, and it's not. And the reason is very simple. Imagine this rod were chewing gum, and I try to pull on it. Well, it's going to stretch. It's going to thin. Ideally, these sides would want to move in because I'm getting longer and I have a fixed volume. So the cross section is going to want to reduce. It's called necking. Because of the constraints we gave and said, none of this face can move, we end up with a fight going on or stress is being created. So it's trying to pull inward, but the constraint says, no, you can't. And that's where we're getting these other stresses from. So you have to be very careful when doing finite element analysis that you apply good constraints that do not overdefine your uh, your model. Let's fit this. So we can also look at displacements. We can see how the parts stretched under the loads we applied. So I'll say show. And we have all zeros here. Well, that's not much fun. So let's modify that. We'll say edit definition again. And this time I'm going to go over to chart options. And we can change the number of decimal places right down here. Oh, let's make it eight decimal places. And you can see where the rod is the longest and there was the most material to stretch, it actually deflected the furthest. And it looks like we've got about zero, 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 about one half a thousandth of an inch. So you can look at stresses, you can look at deflections, we can look at strains if we want. So there's the strains in our model. So a very powerful tool. And in the next videos, we'll go on to some more complicated models. And we'll look at what can go right and what can go wrong and how to make sure you're looking at good answers. Okay. Thank you for watching.